Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Tool Shop, and I'm very excited for another tool build as a part of Tool Shop. And I'm going to be starting, I have no idea how long this series is going to be, I don't know if it's going to be a series or just a single video, but I'm making a hydraulic forging press. Because of some events that happened uh, back in my Hammer 1.5 fail video, uh, I was trying to punch the hammer eyes in some of the 20 billets that I'm making, the 20 hammers, and with the amount of times that just punches got stuck and everything, I didn't know what to do. I was very flustered that night, and I just, I couldn't punch the, the billets. Anyone I've seen that does production forge work has a forging press that the actual punch is in, as well as stripper bars that you set the hammer into, punches in, and as it retracts up as a double acting cylinder, it actually pulls the punch out of the hammer billet. If any of you are interested, um, I'm not intending on making up plans, however, if enough people comment or someone wants them, um, I will be willing to sell them if you'd like. Um, that's one thing I've definitely noticed over the past year, especially making some bigger tooling. Buying plans from someone, making sure that's actually like well done, you get all the dimensions and everything. You know, like my power hammer I bought plans for, uh, the 2x72 belt grinder I bought plans for, and, you know, the 30-something bucks for those plans, well worth it, because for the work that's been put into making them, 30 bucks for the plans to support the creator of them, it's an amazing saving, because the work that they've gone through to make them, definitely, definitely well worth it. And like I said, especially like my press here that I'm making, I got it checked by an engineer, so I know that nothing's going to bend. On that, let's jump into deburring and starting to drill everything. have all the parts deburred, so all the edges that were cut and stuff like that. I've also done a bunch of layout work on uh, s just laying out and center punching all the holes that need to be drilled. So there's eight holes in total that need to be drilled. The only issue is that it is all one inch thick plate and it all needs to be one inch diameter holes. And then uh, I was actually given a bunch of really nice drill bits that I just resharpened and uh, I'm planning on using those to try and step it up all the way to one inch, so let's see how this goes. So far, the drilling is going really well. I got these three holes drilled. Right now, this is the main plate that both of these actually get bolted to with these guys to help give me extra working room as well as keep the press from racking side to side as it pushes up and down. I'm going to go in and eat now, and then I will come back out and keep working on one, two, three, four, five holes. Alright, heater's on, I'm back, drill press is still here, so let's continue on with drilling these holes. <laughs>
Bump. After enough time spent pretty much pushing this thing to its max, I present the main parts of the press. I got the plate right there, the base plate I'm using, as well as my angle iron. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to come down, uh, set that down, start doing all the layout on it, get these in place, and I'm just going to start tacking everything. So, automatic, next day, three, two, one. It is the next day, so let's start putting this on the ground, and then we can start seeing what we can get welded and set up. I realize that, uh, not that I'm going to be bolting it down to the floor uh, in this shop, I will want to have at least the option to bolt this to the ground, or I want to have at least half inch bolt holes in all four corners, so if I want to, I can bolt it to the ground, so I'll start drilling that. I've gotten all the layout done, if you can see that there. Let's go set this on the ground and start, uh, start setting it up. some thought into this when I went in for lunch. The guides, even though it's going to be greased, it still would be nice to have them a little bit smoother than mill scale. So I'm just going to take the grinder, pop off one of these sides, and then I'll go in, grind down the inside of everything, grind off the other piece, grind the other ones down, just so the surfaces are smoother than mill scale. Um, and then I'll keep trying to set it up to weld it. It's taken me a little while, obviously. I've gone through, cleaned it all up so there's no mill scale. So I got that done on all four of them, and I got that one set up, and then got all this stuff cleaned down as you see here. So I'm going to go start tacking all this up, and then start setting this stuff up too. Time lapse. I've been working on this all day. As you can see, I now have all four of the beams. Uh, they're tack welded to the base and that plate. I, I've definitely been taking a lot of time to ensure the parallelism all the way up this. I don't want there to be any racking at all. That's that's when it is uh, being applied under pressure of it kind of being pushed side to side. So it's late right now. I'm going to go to sleep. And uh, tomorrow after work, I'm going to start welding this up. An instant next day. Three, two, one. Next day. So all this stuff I got clamped up and I'm going to start welding it now.
I got the press all tack welded in place, like everything. Now I'm gonna go ahead now and start actually putting the structural welds on all of this. For the majority of this, I'm gonna be trying to run some 532 7018 stick rods. I'm using a thicker diameter to just build up a lot more weld faster. Let's start welding. So I'm not actually sure what the last thing I remember filming was. There hasn't been too much changes done. And you can see that I have the press all welded up. Um, this is not gonna be like finished welding, but as you can see, I've went out and got the cylinder that I'm using. And I also have a little uh, power unit right there that I'm about to start wiring up. This is all starting to be starting to come together i still need to get the hoses wire that up i'm gonna leave that for another video i'm gonna call this part one um this has definitely been a fun fun build for me it's given me a lot of practice experience it, it's just been a lot of fun so uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe give it a big thumbs up Comment down below if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. If any of you are interested, I can make up plans to sell for this, and I have links to everything that I'm buying in store, online, whatnot, that you guys could actually get if you ever wanted to make your own hydraulic forging press. So thank you for watching, we'll see you in part two.